Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We're heading to my favorite little Florida track, Tampa Bay oh, Downs. I love, I love Tampa Bay Downs, Matt. You too? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's a nice place on the uh, the other coast of Florida. Yeah, Tampa Bay Downs. They have the uh, the card we picked out. Of course, the Kentucky Derby Trail continues. This is their signature card of the year, Matt Shipman at Tampa Bay Downs with the Tampa Bay Derby uh, offering Kentucky Derby qualifying points. And they have a nice little card of uh, several stakes. We're going to look at a good turf race as well. But let's start with that Tampa Bay Derby, Matt, because uh, people want to talk Derby to us. Let's look at the field. I think we got 10 entered. There it is. 10 entered in the Tampa Bay Derby map. This is a mile 16th, of course, on the main track. Grade three, $400,000. And uh, a little bit of question who will be the favorite. Uh, it could be the horse who won the Sam F. Davis last time, or it could be uh, a Chad Brown shipper in from Gulfstream Park. But let's start at the rail, and I think the rail is an interesting place to start this Tampa Bay Derby, Matt, because uh, heartened it was a good-looking winner over the track last time for trainer Todd Pletcher. Yes, absolutely. And uh, uh, for Todd Pletcher, this maiden victory at Tampa was in Harton's fourth career try, noting that it was against a field of six. Her, his prior races – interesting two tries on the turf with a third place at Gulfstream and a second place at aqueduct and his debut was on the dirt at aqueduct for a third place finish so here we go after that dirt maiden win why not take a shot on the derby trail yeah it, it was a good win matt it was by four and a half lengths in, in solid time it was actually the same afternoon as the uh, Sam F. Davis. I don't think he beat a heck of a lot in the maiden special weight, but he did it nicely. He's an improving son of street boss for Pletcher, and uh, obviously he's he's uh, capable on both surfaces, but I like the fact that he showed a little bit more speed last time, but he certainly can pass horses as we've seen in his first three races. It's a jump up from maiden special weights to the grade three Tampa Bay Derby, but Harton looks like a horse on the move for Todd Pletcher breaking out of the one hole. Number two will be a long shot, Matt. He was sure a long shot last time in the Sam F. Davis. I think he was 127 to one. Those who took a gamble on those big odds uh, were not rewarded when he lost the rider early in the race. One thing I'll say about Everdo at the son of Gary D, he brings some speed to the table. Yeah, I guess uh, maybe the horse was a little pissed off uh, when he looked over and saw the odds on the odd board and said, you think I'm 120 to 7 to 1? I'm not running this race. So threw his jockey off. Anyway, I just, yeah. of course. Uh, yeah, well, well, hey, Matt, that's uh, uh, maybe a good a good comment for a horse we probably won't be talking to too, uh, too much about here in the Tampa Bay Derby. But he, I, I would expect him to be involved early as a, as a long shot again in this Tampa Bay Derby. Uh, going back to the field, I think there are a couple uh, maidens in the field that wouldn't shock me if they ran very well in the Tampa Bay Derby. And uh, given that uh, maybe the, the favorites haven't quite proven themselves as real, true Kentucky Derby contenders, maybe this race could be ripe for an upset. One of those two maidens is named Give Me Liberty. And uh, uh, Diodoro brings us this horse, Matt, uh, after being claimed for 100000 out of a out of a debut performance at Churchill Downs. He's run against some pretty good horses in maiden races at Oakland Park when he was second both times. Yeah, a couple seconds at Oakland Park. Uh, interestingly, you brought up the maiden flavor of this uh, Tampa Derby with two horses that are still maidens but there are five other horses in the field brian that their their only victory is their maiden victory so uh, it, it's an interesting kind of field yeah it, it's not a uh a deep field as far as proven stakes performers but on the other hand there are horses that could step up on the other hand it's also a race where maybe there's a, a good betting opportunity give me liberty one of the maidens that i think has a shot 
in the Tampa Bay Derby. Another horse with a shot, not as good money. You mentioned horses that would be eligible for non-winners of one other than good money fits that bill. But on the other hand, he's undefeated and he's also trained by one Chad Brown. Yep, undefeated. Uh, got a maiden victory at Tampa in January. Uh, I think Chad Brown uh, probably prefers to run his horses uh, at on the main track and the turf course at uh, uh, Tampa over Gulfstream Park. Anyway, uh, good money. Got that victory. He was sent off at four to one. Um, it was a rather slow race, however. Yeah, it wasn't uh, wasn't necessarily eye catching. He won it by length, as you mentioned. It was seven furlongs uh, about six weeks ago. Matt, good money will have to move forward. The son of good magic, though, should like to stretch out. He gets a mile and a sixteenth here, and uh, if he can move forward, uh, Chad Brown, of course, is always dangerous. As is the rider you see there listed for good money. That's I ride Ortiz Jr. Chad Brown will be well represented in the two races we're looking at today, Matt. And uh, one of the reasons is good money and also the five horse domestic product. Domestic product could be the horse to beat in here. He should buy for favoritism. Uh, we have him as a close second choice on our morning line. Domestic product, of course, a son of practical joke who uh, has some stakes experience and probably coming out of his best race yet last time. Has some stakes experience, has some experience on the Derby trail already, has some Kentucky Derby points uh, in the bank already. Uh, domestic product is one of those horses that I mentioned that technically at this point has only a maiden victory to his credit. But last time he was a very nice second in the Holy Bull, the race, and, and finished ahead of fierceness in there. Yeah, that's true. He beat the champion fierceness when he rallied, a mild rally for second behind Hades. Uh, Matt, there's a couple of horses of, of real interest in here to me that um, I'm not sure about a mile and a quarter with their breeding. Domestic product, Practical Joke. You always wonder if Practical Jokes want to go 10 furlongs moving forward. Also, Hartman, who I like in here as well, is a son of Street Boss. And, and I, I'm not sure about Sons of Street Boss going 10 furlongs. But a mile and 16th, Tampa Bay Derby. Maybe this is a good spot for both Harton and domestic product at a distance that they might really enjoy. Uh, number six is a son of Anchor Down Matt. That's uh, Katire, Katire Vizcaya. 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 Katire Vizcaya. There you go. Son of Anchor Down. Uh, looks like a long shot in here, Matt. He's he's won one of four lifetime, and uh, he's not been very good lately. Not lately. He began his career last summer, Brian, at Saratoga, running in two maiden special weights. Those were those maiden special weights that they do run at Saratoga that are restricted to horses that sold at auction for less than $50,000. Um, in the second one of those that Katire Vizcaya uh, ran and he did break his maiden, but since then, as you mentioned, not in, not uh, as nearly interesting. Was tenth in a small stake at Delaware Park, and then fifth most recently in an allowance at Tampa. Sounds like a long shot to me. Yeah, maybe he had a little bit of trouble in that return at Tampa Bay Downs, but that was only allowance race where he was a well beaten fifth. Matt, let's take a look at the time form U.S. Pace Projector now. Uh, and they are projecting a fast pace here. And uh, hopefully I've put this up at a timely uh, opportunity here because the outside horse of, you see three horses they're projecting to be on the lead in a pretty fast pace here in the Tampa Bay Derby. It's the number seven. He, his name is No More Time. We actually have him as a slight favorite on our morning line. Like I said, I think he will uh, vie for phase, favoritism with the Chad Brown trained domestic product. Uh, Asana not this time, who's run some very good-looking races. Uh, he's thrown in a couple of not-so-great races uh, for D'Angelo, the trainer, but uh, a six-and-three-quarter length maiden win at uh, uh, Gulfstream Park was followed by a rank uh, kind of uneasy performance where he finished fifth in the Mucho Macho Man, but he turned it around last time in the Sam F. Davis. Certainly did turn it around, Brian, and and went to the front end uh, in that race to get the victory. So we we've seen uh, uh, 
different running styles from no more time, but certainly off that win in, on the Derby trail in the Sam F Davis, we probably can expect him to be forwardly placed. And, and, and if there is uh, some pace pressure, it is always better to be to the outside of them as it is suggesting in the pace projector. Yeah. We mentioned ever do it as a big long shot. You see him down on the rail as, as uh, one of the horses up there. Also good money coming out of that seven for long maiden race. Uh, they're projecting as a possible uh, pace presence along with no more time. Yeah, after being rank in the uh, Mucho Macho Man, fighting the jockey, wanting to go more early than the jockey wanted him to go in the Mucho Macho Man, they let him loose in the Sam F. Davis, and it looked pretty good over the track against the decent field here. Uh, in fact, this Tampa Bay Derby might not be a whole lot stronger than the Sam F. Davis was, so no more time. Obviously a big factor. If it is, though, a fast contested pace, that's something to think about if you're on the no more time bandwagon, as many will be on Saturday. Number eight, Matt, I, I, I know you liked him a little bit. His name is Crazy Mason, last time in the Sam F. Davis. The son of Cole Front uh, was a, a bit of a disappointment, though, though I think he gets a, a, a little bit uh, of a uh, addition uh, to, his, uh, to his equipment on Saturday here in the Tampa Bay Derby. Yeah, blinkers go back on for uh, Crazy Mason, who wore them earlier in the year. He'll be making his eighth start for my friend Greg Sacco. Um, yeah, uh, uh, we remember I did like him a little bit going into the Sam F. Davis. That was off of a, a nice allowance win at Tampa. Hey, Brian, for sure, he's going to have to run a race much more like that allowance win than his performance in the Sam F. Davis. Yeah, and his allowance win two starts back was pretty good. It'll be uh, interesting to see with the addition of blinkers due for Crazy Mason, who finished mid-pack and never was really a threat to Sam F. Davis. But uh, if you go back to the allowance uh, race, uh, maybe a long shot to consider in here, again, getting blinkers on, uh, which could invite him to show a little bit more pace this time, which could uh, move him into a pretty packed uh, uh first turn with uh, speed horses galore in here, or at least horses that want to be near or on the lead in here. Number nine, Grand Mo the first, an interesting name, a son, son of Uncle Mo. Uh, like Hart and Matt, he's gone back and forth a little bit between dirt and turf. He also has some stakes experience and some decent stakes experience, a horse who you can't throw out, but uh, it's hard to know exactly how good yet Grand Mo the first is. Yeah, I think Grandma the First is an interesting, uh, what I will call a, a long shot. Um, he has run on all all types of tracks. Uh, uh, his first two races were on the Tapita at Gulfstream Park, and it was a where he had a maiden special weight win and an allowance win. Went out to California onto the turf in a Grade Three and finished third. And then came back over to Gulfstream Park and had a, you know, had a decent third in the seven furlong swale stake. So uh, uh, hasn't really run a bad race and, and done it on all kinds of surfaces on both coasts. Um, interesting long shot. Yeah, an, an interesting horse in here, Matt. I, I think they showed some... Um showed some confidence in the son of Uncle Mo to send him out to California uh, just before the Breeders' Cup uh, last last fall and run in that Zuma Beach. It was a third behind a very good horse and endlessly. Uh, Grand Mo the first. I, I don't love his race returning or his first race on dirt returning this year in the swale where he was third. I don't think I, I, I've said before, I don't think it was a particularly strong addition of the swale. He was third, decent effort, first race on dirt, dropping back to seven furlongs could move forward here like you say an interesting long shot here's another maiden on the outside matt number 10 is sturdy and uh sturdy is uh trained by george weaver um he was uh third in a pretty big field at saratoga in his debut problem was he was third by 20 lengths of course the first two horses were very good horses and locked and drum roll please since then he's moved forward a little bit um, coming off a decent third last time where he was only beaten a half length going nine furlongs at Gulfstream Park. Yeah, uh, um, I don't normally, Brian, I wouldn't normally like a horse that is still a maiden going on to the Kentucky Derby Trail. 
in a in a graded stakes race. Um, but uh, some interesting things to note about Sturdy. Sturdy is owned by the same partnership that just won the Gotham Stakes with an impressive winner, Deterministic. Uh, um, and as you mentioned, uh, uh, Sturdy has run behind some good horses. You mentioned Lock, Drumroll, Please, and Domestic Product, who is in this field. Yeah, Sturdy finished second to Domestic Product. Uh, pretty well beaten second a couple starts back. And last time, just beaten the half length. He'll have to move forward like the other maiden in the race, Give Me Liberty. But I think both are not throwouts in the Tampa Bay Derby, pretty wide open Tampa Bay Derby. The other race we want to talk about on Saturday, Matt, of course, is the Hillsboro. Hillsboro has attracted some of the better uh, turf mares, females, older females in the country. Uh, and, and this race is often a good race on Tampa Bay Derby Day, and this year is no exception. Let's take a look at the field, Matt. Uh, we drew uh, eight, eight fillies and mares uh, in this one, and uh, you see several familiar names starting from the rail, the six-year-old daughter of slumber, Fluffy Socks. Matt, I got to say, Fluffy Socks, of course, trained by Chad Brown, written to be ridden by Irad Ortiz Jr. She's run a ton of good races in her career. She just doesn't win all that often. Yes, I think I, I have the same feeling there. You know, you and and, and any time you get a uh, a graded stakes race on the turf with a good purse and fillies and mares in particular, you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get more than one horse entered by Ch Chad Brown, Fluffy Socks, last seen in the P Pegasus World Cup, filly and mare turf grade two, finished fourth. Before that was out in California in the grade one matriarch and finished second. Before that, a third in the Athenia. We have to go back to, it's almost a year now, last May, uh, to find Fluffy Sock's last victory, which came at Churchill Downs in the Distaff Turf Mile. I've lost some money betting on this horse to win in the past. Yeah, she's a classy mare. There's no doubt about that. And she runs good races. That Distaff Mile, uh, Churchill Downs is a pretty big race, and, and she rallied to win it. Uh, nine furlongs here, uh, this grade two. It, it will allow Fluffy Socks in an eight-horse field to be, come running, as she always does. The second in the matriarch was a good race. The, the fourth beat less than two lengths in the Pegasus World Cup Philly Mare Turf. Uh, in January, with certainly a good performance, she could be favored with all things going for her. But she just doesn't get to the to, to the line first very often. Number two is her entry mate, another Chad Brown. Jose Ortiz will be on market segmentation. Market segmentation has a much better winning record than Fluffy Sox. Maybe not not quite as experienced in the in the big graded stakes races, but market segmentation had a nice three race winning streak last year. Uh, which included the, the the final one of those three was the uh, the Grade One, the New York Stakes in, in, at Belmont Park. So, uh, market segmentation was getting very good. She was beaten uh, pretty badly in the Diana in July, and that's the last time we saw her. Yeah, that's the last time we saw her. And usually, uh, I, that doesn't bother me very much. Long layoffs with uh, horses coming back for Chad Brown. However, this was not, I assume, not a layoff that was caused by let's give this horse some time let's give this horse a break they've had a you know they they've had a a tough campaign already it was uh towards the beginning of the summer in the diana and and i interpret that as something went wrong physically uh after that so we haven't seen market segmentation since july yeah i, I agree uh, even with that three ways three race winning streak and some nice stakes wins in there. You, you got to feel like she would have been involved in the fall if she was 100% healthy. So we don't know for sure. And she'll, she'll vie for favoritism with her entry mate, uh, Fluffy Socks. Market segmentation, though. A daughter of American Pharaoh, five-year-old, who might uh, be ready to make some real noise this year if she's 100% healthy. Number three is another horse you can't throw out in this field. That's Sparkle Blue. Uh, she'll probably be, oh, the sixth choice or so in here for trainer Graham Motion. But the daughter of Hearts Fun is a graded stakes winner, Matt. And if you look at her form, it's hard to say she's got no shot. No, that's true. A lot of nice finishes. Uh, a third in the endeavor recently uh, in uh, last month at 
Tampa, a fourth in the Athenia, second in the uh, ladies, a grade two at uh, Kentucky Downs. But like we said about uh, Fluffy Sox, it, it, it's been a while to find the last win for Sparkle, Sparker Blue. This is hard for me to say for some reason. For Sparkle Blue, you have to look back to uh, uh, Laurel in July. Yeah, yeah. Sparkle Blue, uh, actually, if you look at her form, it's it's somewhat similar to Fluffy Socks, and I think Fluffy Socks just has a little bit more class and a little bit more experience against top level horses, like uh, we'll see here on Saturday. So Sparkle Blue, one of those horses who wants to rally. I think Matt and I agree. We both think that Fluffy Socks is probably just a little bit better, but you never know with racing luck and and things like that. Sparkle Blue, certainly a horse you could throw in uh, down below on your exotics. Okay, I was talking about horses that want to uh, rally a little bit, Matt. Maybe we can take a quick look at the Timeform U.S. Pace Projector. Uh, they're, they're showing an average kind of pace in here with horses we haven't talked about yet on the lead. But you see Fluffy Socks, the one. You see Sparkle Blue, the three. And you also see number six, Embrace Me, as behind in the field. They, they might have some more work to do in a race that doesn't have a ton of early pace on Saturday. Number four in the field is Aspen Grove, and, and she's one of the interesting, there's several interesting European imports in the field here, Matt. This is a four-year-old daughter of Justify, interestingly, trained by Jack Sisterson these days. Uh, she was a grade three winner in Ireland, and she made a splash when she first got to the United States. Certainly did, Brian, with a, a grade one win at Belmont Park in the, in the Belmont Oaks, and then interestingly, uh, uh, she got moved to run next in the Saratoga Derby. That means that was against the boys and most recently was sixth in the E.P. Taylor uh, up at Woodbine. Yeah, the E.P. Taylor, of course, came last fall and she really didn't do much. Uh, looking at her form, you would have thought she got bet, uh, would get bet a little bit more in that race. But that was a really strong E.P. E. Taylor field. She did not do much, though, so you, you kind of wonder going forward, where does she fit? But a grade one winner in New York and a group three winner in Ireland, you certainly have to respect her. Javier Castellano will be jumping on the number four. Number five looks like a long shot. One of those horses that could be out uh, on a uh, moderate pace here is Beechnut Trophy. She looks cheaper, Matt. She's trained by Safi Joseph, is the five-year-old daughter of Real Solution. Um, I'm, I'm trying to, to find a reason why Beach Nut Trophy might run a big race as a long shot. I, I just couldn't quite do it. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Um, it, it is uh, worth pointing out that uh, all of the races in uh, Beach Nut Trophy's uh, career have been on the turf or on the tapita, which means this will be uh, hit, uh, her, you know, going back. Uh, again on the turf last time was sixth in a, a handicap kind of a starter handicap at Gulfstream Park and had an allowance win on the tapita before that yeah two starts ago she was a winner at Gulfstream Park but uh, the class level looks uh, to be a pretty big increase for her probably we could say a lot of similar things about Embrace Me the number six although Embrace Me is the filly that wants to rally a little bit more Embrace Me is a younger daughter, a four-year-old daughter of Candy Ride. Uh, Tom Albertrani has this one coming in. Uh, just like Beach Nut Trophy, though, I think she's been mostly running more an allowance-type company, uh, although she did win last time, rallied to get up in an allowance race over this Tampa turf course. Yeah, it was a nice win uh, on the Tampa turf course. But before that, Brian, her form was not particularly great. Yeah, and if we're looking at horses that really want to come from behind, we already talked about Fluffy Socks as a main contender, Sparkle Blue as, as a possible contender. Embrace Me certainly looks like the least of those three coming from near the back of the pack. Number seven, Matt. Number seven is a very interesting. She's a daughter of Martinborough, a four-year-old import named Elusive Princess. Uh, Arno Delacour brings this one in, and uh, she was a good filly in France. Uh, as a three-year-old filly, she ran in the big races in France last year, and she was competitive in those races. Like, uh, like Aspen Grove, she's made a little bit of noise since coming over to the United States. 
Yeah, I, uh, I was going to say the same thing, Brian. Uh, yep, came over, went to uh, one of the Naira tracks and won the Saratoga, Saratoga Oaks in that uh, turf tiara that they now have uh, in New York in the summer, uh, spring, summer, and the fall. And last scene, which was in October, was fourth in the Queen Elizabeth II at Keeneland, which is a race that always draws a very big and deep and competitive field. Yeah, Alusa Princess, uh, two races in America, as you mentioned, Saratoga Oaks was a big win. You got to wonder a little bit with Alusa Princess if she really wants soft turf or not. She got a, a wet turf course that day at Saratoga. If she can do it as well on a turf course that's a little firmer is not yet completely known, but a lot of class races. Her last one, as you mentioned, was last fall, a little bit of a break. Uh, Maj, of course, a top, top three-year-old filly, also from Europe, won that QE2. And Elusive Princess just weakened a little bit to be beaten over two lengths, but not a bad performance at all. We'll see. I, I think Elusive Princess has the capability of becoming a major player in this division this year, but we'll see what she does Saturday at Tampa Bay Downs against the solid field. Yet another European, Matt. I, I don't think that Star Fortress necessarily has the European form that uh, Aspen Grove had over in, in Ireland or Elusive Princess had in France, but Star Fortress was a decent horse in England before coming over and again, making some noise. Yep. Again, another one of these horses that comes over from Europe and, uh, uh, she, uh, she is trained by Cherie DeVoe came back and got a win in the grade three Cardinal at Churchill Downs. Most recently was in that Pegasus World Cup Philly and Mayor Turf that we have mentioned a couple times already. Uh, uh, on paper, it may look discouraging, but you have to look uh, carefully at uh, her performance in that uh, Pegasus race. Um, she finished 11th, but she was only five lengths behind. And the uh, comments make it sound like she had a pretty rough trip in there, having to steady, then having to check. And get and getting uh, uh, found out pretty wide. So um, this is one that uh, is interesting. That might be at a little bit of a higher price. Could be after that last race. I don't think she deserves to be. And 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 we'll have to see. Um, coming off her first race in America, you said she won the Cardinal, a uh, Grade Three at Churchill Downs. She won by ten lengths in her yeah. American debut. So she was one of the favorites in that Pegasus World Cup, Philly and Mare Turf. And, uh, yeah, it was definitely a bad trip. Uh, certainly I watched it. And, uh, yeah, five lengths, 11th, you don't know what to make of that. But she did not really have a great opportunity to run her race for sure in the Pegasus uh, World Cup, Philly and Mare Turf. So Star Fortress tries to bounce back here as one, I think, of one of several players in a very good uh, addition of the Hillsboro. Like I said, the Hillsboro is often good. Matt, let's go to our top picks in this race. Uh, I, I want to know who you like first in the Tampa Bay Derby. Uh, I'll let you go first, my friend. It's a tough race, Brian, but and it's an interesting mix of uh, uh, the the two favorites who are you know certainly worth considering. But there's a bunch of horses that that are going to be long prices that uh, that. Personally, I would use in the wager. Uh, for me, I'm I would use them and key them with uh, one of the favorites. I'm going to go with the Chad Brown. I'm going to go with domestic product. Yeah, and, and domestic product, I, I I can see as probably the horse to beat here. I, mean, I I I guess I go back between him and No More Time, who won the local prep. But domestic product uh, ran against good horses last time and, and ran pretty well when second. In, in the Holy Ball. I'm looking for somebody to um, move forward. And I, I think Harden showed that his uh, he liked his return to dirt and that return to dirt happened at Tampa Bay Downs. Uh, so I like the way he won his maiden for trainer Todd Fletcher. Four to one on our morning line. I'm hoping maybe he can get a little bit higher in that, but we'll see. Harden, a horse who can pass horses. I like Harden a bit in the Tampa Bay Derby, but like you, I think there's a bunch of horses with us to throw in a little bit in a wide open race. How about the Hillsboro, my friend? Hillsboro, I am going to go with uh, Star Fortress, Brian. 
Uh, um, I, I think this is a horse with potential, as we just mentioned, who got a really bad trip. So I'm going to be a trip handicapper here and go with Star Fortress, who, uh, you know, is likely to be the the fourth, fifth choice, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Star Fortress. That makes a lot of sense, Matt. Bad trip last time. See if she can bounce back with some decent odds in here. I really like Elusive Princess. I like what I've seen in her two races in America, and I like what I saw over in France. I think Elusive Princess might be a budding star for trainer Arno Delacour. So I'm going to go with uh, with her as my top pick in the Hillsboro. Matt, last week, uh, it was a strange week. We saw a bunch of scratches, just FYI. No, so nice host locked, all scratched, uh, to, uh, and, and others speak easy as well. Strange week. Doorknock, uh, I don't know what to think of Doorknock's win in the Fountain of Youth. Uh, not overly impressive, but uh, he did what he needed to do in his return. I thought it was a nice uh, win for Newgate out in the big cap uh, as a uh, horse who's kind of returning to top company. Uh, any thoughts from last week? I think I meant, yeah, I think there was a, a lot of buzz after the Gotham stakes about the performance of deterministic uh, coming back from his only race that had been a maiden win at July, where apparently he was very, very well liked a, a horse that uh, is a good mover, a smart horse. And, and uh, a lot of people think this one is, uh, is one brian that's going to have no trouble getting 10 furlongs that's a great segue matt because next week deterministic is a horse i was impressed with last week winning the gotham and we're going to do our top 10 lists next week on kind of a quiet racing week around the country so we'll have kentucky derby kentucky oaks tops 10. here's a coming attraction deterministic will be in my top 10 for sure off that gotham win matt let me get a party shot from you my friend Sure. If you're uh, interested in more detailed analysis of the Tampa Derby, Derby mine is up on the Horse Racing Nation website, and uh, there's more about uh, how I'd wager on the race. There you go. Hey, folks, thank you for watching every week. We sure do appreciate it here uh, at, at Horse Center. Uh, Matt and I have been doing this a long time, and we love hearing uh, all your comments and meeting you out at the track. Thank you for watching. As always, uh, if you haven't yet turned on those uh, notifications or if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that too. I also want to thank, of course, our friend Candace Curtis in the home office for our race graphics, Timeform US for their pace projectors of the races we use, and Derby Wars, the best contest site out there, our sponsor. All right, Matt, say goodbye. We're, uh, we're coming back hard next week with two top tens. Absolutely. Look forward to it. All right, folks, good luck until then. We'll see you next week on another edition of Horse Center.